everybody. Uh, welcome to Dynamics Con uh, 2022. My name is Juanita Shane, and I work at Columbus US in San Diego, California. I'm going to be presenting an MVP approach to D365 implementation. I want to really thank the Dynamics Con team for inviting me to present this uh, presentation to all of you. Uh, we have been implementing several customers now with an MVP approach, and it's been very, very well received. So I'm excited to share it with you. As we move forward, I just want to let you know that this we uh, are going to record all questions in the chat. I'm going to have a live Q&A session at the end of this, even though this session is recorded. So please uh, put your questions in the chat, and I'll be happy to talk to you at the end with, about those. So a little bit more about me. I'm a senior engagement manager, as I said, at Columbus in the US. I've been leading Dynamics 365 and AX implementations here at Columbus since 2017, and for three years prior to that at Tridea Partners. So I have seen it all in terms of uh, upgrades, uh, large uh, new implementations, I've seen interventions to add new functionality or help with support of an existing implementation. Uh, prior to that, I worked for 18 years as a director of IT and program and project management in pharmaceutical companies here in San Diego. So I have a background in life science. So with no further ado, I'll get into our agenda today. So first of all, I'm going to probably be telling you a few things that you all can relate to, which are the business challenges you're facing today, why you are looking into either getting a new ERP system or why you're re replacing your current ERP system. We'll look at your business challenges. And then I'm going to share a little from the implementation partner perspective about implementation challenges that we see and talk about that traditional approach that we might take and then contrast that with a MVP implementation approach. So some things that you'll see when I talk about the MVP approach are an ability to have a phased rollout of ERP functionality over time, but it allows you to get value out of the system so much faster and sooner by leveraging core features in D365 that are very rich and also adopting the best practices that we can bring and share with you. Um, it really does help your organization to embrace change. Uh, and Dynamics is an evergreen system. And so Microsoft is always bringing out new features that will benefit the platform, especially if you adhere to best practices. So at the very end, I'll close by comparing an MVP implementation approach with a traditional approach. So thank you. All right. So the challenges that many of our customers have are ones that might resonate with you as well. Um, you might be using a lot of inefficient or manual processes, paper-based spreadsheets to drive your operational processes or to do financial reporting. Um, this can lead to inaccurate inventory tracking. Your financial reports may be delayed or your month-end close may be delayed because it just takes longer to deal with all of that manual data. Um, you also might be having multiple legacy systems that you're using. All the systems are independent. They're not talking to each other. You have duplicate data entry, and you're trying to bring that all together manually to run your business. You also might have some customizations in those solutions that are very fragile, or perhaps they're performance hogs. And these are probably the reasons you're looking for a new ERP system and wanting to get a best of breed like Dynamics 365, because you also want to have better planning tools and you also want to be able to grow that system with your business. You want it to be scalable. So again, with my background uh, implementing D365 as well as other systems, there are challenges that come with a large implementation of an ERP system. And it does require an investment of time, effort, and resources for your team, as well as your implementation partner. And a traditional approach would spend quite a bit of time meeting and reviewing, probably on site, and doing swim lane diagrams and discussions about your current as-is business processes. Taking a lot of time to really understand how you're doing everything today 
with those variety of external systems and manual business processes. And that's a big investment of time. Um, you also will need to talk about your desired new processes in these sessions. And you might need to have multiple meetings about the same process because some of your stakeholders don't agree. And there's further discussion about what the ideal new process might be. And so there's time that needs to happen with buy-in. Then as you're getting to, de we're demonstrating the system to you with a standard implementation approach, there's gonna be a desire to redesign standard functionality in an ERP system that matches your existing processes that you've come up with and you've been having to use for the last you know, five, 10, maybe 20 years in some cases. So um, there's a lot of discussions about customizations and development that could be done. And, and Dynamics is a rich system. It does support development, but on the other hand, it takes time to create those modifications, to test them. And that's something that you're going to have to always be testing every time there's a new upgrade. That also delays your ability to get in the system and start testing the actual configuration because you're waiting perhaps on some of these customizations to come through, whether they're uh, custom reports or whether they're more complex customizations. And so, as I mentioned, you would also need to test all of those customizations every time you have a Microsoft update. And the beauty of the Microsoft Dynamics Evergreen release practice is that you would be getting a new update every month potentially. So the more that you can use standard out of the box features, the less you would have to test as an organization on any of those updates that you choose to accept. So as a reminder, please, um, you might have some questions about this. So please put it in the chat and I'll be happy to take them after. All right, well, let's talk about an MVP approach. And it really is all about embracing dynamics, standard features and functionality. And, that, and we can help you do that uh, as your implementation partner. And I'm gonna talk about how we have done it in the past. So basically, there's a phased rollout plan that we would think about in terms of an MVP approach. The whole goal would be, if you want to think of it sort of in a sprint uh, concept or construct, that what can we start out with as our basic foundation? And, and a lot of times that will be core financials, and you'll be doing that in phase one. And we'll be using our expertise to configure standard finance functionality in D365 on, on your first phase. And then in the next phase, which we can start much sooner because we've already got you going on your core financials, we could then pull in procurement, fixed assets, more financial reporting. Um, there is a rich financial reporting uh, module within D365 and it allows us to very quickly roll out those standard reports either in phase one or phase two. So phase two and beyond, it might be based on your business model. So we have customers that their next phase is gonna be advanced warehouse. Um, we have other customers that you know, might wanna have uh, enterprise asset management might be another module that they wanna roll out sooner than later. And so we'll work with you definitely on the roadmap. And so we take a strategic approach in terms of your MVP plan but always the, the idea is that we would, we would sort of crawl, walk, run. And when I say crawl, I want you to think of like a baby that's crawling across the floor really fast and you almost can't catch them. So that's, you know, sort of a starting point is it helps with your change management to have smaller scale rollouts that are based on standard functionality. And then you can quickly move to the next step uh, in a short time. Let me show you what that looks like in another way. So here's a little more detail about what those phases would look like on your roadmap. So for example, for finance, the processes that might be in scope would be your, your core chart of accounts, general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, cash and bank, bank reconciliation. There's room here to roll out your third-party products for e-banking, for example, like SK Global. 
Um, those do integrate with D365. And so, so you would definitely want the core structure to be in place, and then you would build that ISV uh, implementation on top of that. Again, phase two might look like procurement and fixed assets, purchase requests, purchase orders, receiving uh, fixed assets, for example, process manufacturing. We've done this for manufacturing organizations and they've leveraged supply chain and, and they've started out with some basic MRP functionality and then they've built on that over time. And the order of these phases will depend on what's best for your business. But in this example, I'm saying advanced warehouse and inventory management would come next. So, and then we would do further iterations of master planning, perhaps budgeting. And then we also could circle back to finance and build on top of what we've already delivered, what's already in production. We could build out project accounting, for example. So this is sort of the vision of laying the foundation and a plan. And we would do this strategically with you, you know, at the beginning of an engagement. But then how does this streamline your implementation? This is the slide where I wanna really show kind of <clears throat> the difference in activities between a standard implementation that is based on my, Microsoft's SureStep process at, uh, at its core and the MVP approach. And so a traditional full implementation could take anywhere from 12 to 18 months depending on the number of modules that you need to implement. And these are just some of the activities that will happen. I don't mean to say this is an inclusive, all-inclusive list, but I chose these examples for a reason so that I could talk to you about the ones that are highlighted here. So for example, in the diagnostics phase, you wanna have workshops to review the current business process and you wanna do analysis and maybe more workshops to map the 2B processes and do configuration of proof of concept for D365. So with a MVP approach, if you're willing to accept out of the box standard D365 as your starting point, those workshops can focus on showing you what does standard D365 look like? What can it do? We don't have to spend as much time talking about customizing D365 to your current process, but really talking through, can this process work for you? This has worked for many of our customers. I'll let, let us show you how other customers are benefiting from these features. The other benefit of this is if you come in with the mindset of an MVP approach, on day one, we can start customizing, or sorry, configuring, not customizing, configuring your system. We've done it before. You provide us chart of accounts, account structure. We can start setting up the system day one. We don't have to wait for the outcome of all these meetings. We don't have to wait for a requirements document to be written and signed. We can already show it to you in some of these meetings. So we jumpstart that process. We'll st still do a fit gap analysis to say what in the standard system doesn't meet your needs. Yes, there might be a handful of customizations you still need, but maybe you don't need the 400 customizations that you have in your existing system. If you're willing to consider that so many other customers have contributed to the development of D365 and making it a very strong product out of the box, it just gives you a very solid foundation to grow your system as well. So moving on from the analysis phase to the design phase, typically in the design phase, we need to spend a lot of time documenting those modifications, writing functional design documents, writing technical designs, getting approval, <clears throat> also doing some uh, robust test plans and training plans with you and developing data migration. Those activities will still happen, but guess what? If we're using a standard out of the box approach, we can leverage existing training materials that we've provided to other customers. We have business process libraries that we can leverage that show the flow through the system and, 
and can help you as a jump start for how you want to train your users. Because we still adopt a train the trainer approach. In the development phase, again, that phase can be compressed quite a bit because we're not developing a lot of customizations and we're not iterating on those. We have a lot less of those, and so we can move very quickly to the user acceptance testing. We'll still do key user training, and, we, and you would still do user acceptance testing, but during that time, you're going to be learning the system. Your key users are going to be in there. They're actually going to be able to access the system from the beginning of the analysis phase because we were able to start configuring it so much more quickly. So in the deployment phase, that's when you're also going to see some economies in terms of how fast we can move the materials that are coming through will include less customizations. So in comparison, we've been able to take a modular or phased approach to implementing D365. And we've been able by taking best practices and leveraging standard features, we've been able to, to combine phases like the analysis and design phase. And we've been able to combine the build and acceptance testing phase. And so you can move much more quickly through your implementation in four to six months timeframe. So I know I had a lot there. Um, I welcome you again to put your questions in the chat and I'll be on live after to answer anything I can. All right, well, I've already talked about some of these benefits, but here's a takeaway bulleted list for you that we just covered. For us to be able to initiate that configuration immediately, start sending you tip sheets immediately for those standard features that we configured you can just get into the system. We get that request from customers all the time. You just stood it up. I want to get in there. I want to play with it. I want to see it. Well, we need to configure it. And so if you're able to accept best practices, then I think that the system will be more to your liking because you're going to come to it with an open mind. You're going to be embracing change. So there's that earlier exposure that helps you build confidence and buy-in with the D365 system. So also the smaller phased incremental releases also help your users get used to certain module of the system that went out first, they're using it in production, they get to use it sooner, then they're ready for the next phase. That's what we found. There are some key factors that we need from you to help with the success. And that is a strong commitment from your sponsor and the leaders within your company you know, to adopt this approach and be open to best practices and be open to those standard features and be open to doing things differently than perhaps you have in your legacy systems and your manual processes. It also allows us as your implementation partner to bring our experience to bear and to take our library of tip sheets and business processes and configurations that we've already done time and time again and just quickly get that in there so we can start your project uh, much, much more faster with getting you in there and, and getting faster to the test phase. The other benefit that I don't actually have on the slide, but we've also found this allows you to leverage the e-learning and all the content that's out there um, with the Dynamics Con uh, websites or the Dynamics user groups and the functionality that you're using is standard functionality. So you can leverage e-learning content and references and other materials that are out there. And you won't have to wonder, wait, does that tip or that article really align with how my system is configured? Did we customize something here? And that's why it doesn't look like what it looks like on, on these help websites that I can access or my team can access. So there's another big benefit too. We have received very positive customer feedback on this model so far, and, and we've had several customers that have implemented it. Um, in this particular example, I chose a customer as an example that had implemented not just finance, but also supply chain, production, and advanced warehouse. And they did that in two four-month phases. So they 
are continuing to build on that. But here was their feedback at the end of the, the second phase, just that they needed to be judicious with their resources that would need to be consumed by the project. So again, remember how we talked about those analysis workshops where you had to go in and spend a lot of time telling about all your custom processes and, and deciding and debating and, and making sure you had buy-in to customize the system a certain way and come to a new ideal process. <clears throat> the analysis on their business objectives and the ability to go ahead and provide out-of-the-box solution was scoped very well. They were open to, we need to be innovative. We want to make sure we're getting the most out of the system. And they also found that this approach lent itself towards the overall management of the project was also crucial for them. And it allowed for two to three um, of our team to deploy a full ERP system capable of running their business, not just today, but for years to come. So um, again, I, I have another customer that I'm working with right now. And they said, we're really happy with our initial finance MVP approach, but now we really want to build that next phase of the roadmap for finance. We're ready to put in fixed assets. We're ready to put in project accounting. And we want to keep on taking and leveraging standard D365. So also, um, I don't have the link here, but there are case studies on Columbus website if you really want more details. But I think this is a practice that other partners can do as well. So in closing, when you really have an aspiration to transform, maximize, and future-proof your business, a lot of people might call the MVP approach a minimum viable product. I actually, running these implementations, I don't see it as a minimum at all. I actually think we're maximizing Microsoft's value proposition. And there's strength in the product. There's strength in where Microsoft is taking it in the future. And you are setting yourself up to take advantage of those features by accepting best practices. And you also have the chance to get the system into your hands of your users sooner and getting value earlier. So I wanna thank you very much for your time today. And again, if you have any chat uh, questions, put them in chat and I'll be on shortly to answer them. Thank you. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for watching my presentation. I see I have a couple of questions already in chat. Thank you so much. Um, Bobby Small actually submitted two questions, so I'm going to respond. Um, I'm going to respond to your second question first, Bobby. Who in the organization do I recommend as the project owner? So this kind of speaks to a governance model, um, and what what I've seen is different customers have different roles within their organization. And so I typically don't call it a project owner. I would typically call it a system owner. Um, would be, um, and it might be multiple folks, would be system owners that are champions for these processes and for the business, and they would play pivotal roles on the project. So for example, you might have a chief operating officer or a VP of operations would be your um, system owner and perhaps your controller or your chief financial officer um, sometimes might be on the finance side. Those folks would also play a key part in your executive steering committee, making decisions about the system and escalating them up to your executive sponsor level. So um, it's not always a project manager role that is the, the project owner. I find that often you'll have a project manager that's going to be um, absolutely your partner on the project, coordinating the efforts of the customer team. 
but it's those system owners that really are driving change within the business. They're the leaders that are making decisions. They're the ones guiding you on final requirements, decisions, and helping escalate things for key decision-making on your steering committee. So good question there. The other question, Bobby, that you asked was, how would I recommend organizations proactively start documenting their processes in advance of an implementation? Um, well, some things that we do find helpful, if a company already, for example, has an ERP system and they already have test cases that they've built, um, often those can be uh, really good artifacts for them to bring to the table. Uh, during those analysis workshops and design sessions. Um, some of them might have invested some time in some uh, swim lane uh, process development or discussing their internal requirements and their search for an ERP system. Um, at this point, uh, for an MVP implementation, though, we're actually not necessarily wanting to know all their unique business processes. We are going to be proposing a best practice approach using D365 with standard business processes. So if they do have some artifacts about their current processes, that will allow them to bounce off of uh, the standard configuration and say, but we do one unique thing here. And then they can have a discussion about whether the, do they still need to do the unique thing? Is that something pivotal for the initial implementation? Um, our whole goal here is that we're not tailoring the system to them. We're implementing the best practice version of the core financials because that's what works for a lot of other customers and that allows them to get in faster. So not sure I totally answered your question there, but that's how I would apply it in an MVP approach. Um, Ruth, I would be very happy to share my LinkedIn uh, link on this chat once uh, we're done kind of dialoguing here and answering, answering questions. Uh, hi, Anna, thank you. Uh, I've got two, An I have Anna and Anne. Anne says, what kinds of businesses want to go with MVP versus the full soup to nuts, do it all approach? So uh, in one case, uh, one of the businesses that uh, we worked with that really embraced the MVP approach, they were a startup. Uh, they didn't have an existing ERP system. They saw D365 and this opportunity to take advantage of all of its functionality and rich feature set as something that could be innovative for them and set them apart. So in their case, they didn't have to take um, some complex processes that they developed in their existing ERP system and try to transform them into standard process. So I think it worked very well for them. Uh, in other cases, we've had customers that they're pretty much using more standardized ERP or core financials in another system. And they saw that the finance area was a good place for them to start. And they wanted to really get into using the system very quickly. I, I actually had a customer that used the MVP approach uh, for finance because they only had two months before their ERP system was going to be going away. It was a SaaS model. And so they just needed to move in very, very quickly. And this approach allowed them to have us start the configuration right away, get in there quickly, test, and then they could build on it with more functionality as they had time. So um, those are two examples of the types of companies that really embrace the approach. Um, let's see. Bobby has a follow-up question. Thanks. How concerned should an organization be if they do not have subject matter experts on staff? What can they do to ready the staff? Well, um, I do see in some projects where they're relying very, very heavily on their implementation partner because maybe they have a very small team and their team doesn't have time to participate. I think the MVP approach lends itself very well to that sort of customer because we don't need the customer to define the subject matter expertise of how they've tailored a very special and unique business process. It's more of this is the standard practice for setting up this module. We're going to train you how to use it. There's, it takes out a lot of that decision making that you might need from a key subject matter expert. Are those people important? Absolutely. You want those people to be your change agents within 
the business, helping with other end users, training them, answering questions. So I do think when you have a customer that wants to have limited involvement in the project for whatever reason, I think that is a concern and it's a risk. And um, I do think leveraging out of the box allows that process to be easier for them with the MVP approach. Um, that was a good question. Thank you. Um, I do not see any other questions yet. So I'll just hang on a couple more minutes. One note I wanted to make on the slide deck, um, I had a corrected slide in there. So you'll see one of the slides looked like it appeared twice. Um, please just reference the first slide in there. The second slide was, uh, was incorrect, had a typo. So that was fixed. Okay. At this point, I don't see any other questions, so I'm going to sign off, but I will stay on the chat just for the overall uh, Dynamics Con uh, session in case something comes up later. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming to my session. Have a good day.